The girl put the lively chicks into the soil, thinking that this would produce a large flock of chicks. But a few days later, she turned over the soil again, only to see many wriggling worms. She felt a pain of disgust, but did not feel the least bit guilty because she was born into a cold-blooded aristocratic family. Her mother had forced her to accept life and death since she was a child. When her father died, she didn't feel bad at all and played with the corpse as if nothing had happened. The girl grew up noble and beautiful, she and her lover in the warehouse to explore the secrets of men and women. After being discovered, the mother directly beat the man to death in public. At this time, she saw the scene as become very calm. Soon after she became pregnant, the child she gave birth to was also taken away by her mother and their own to the wolves. Her harsh and indifferent upbringing made her the most ruthless Countess Erzibad in the history of Europe. Afterwards, she was promised to the old count. Her married life was not sweet, but it went very well. While her husband was out on the battlefield recovering land, Erzibad was at home managing the tax collection. The two of them lived in great prosperity. However, this caused the king to worry. Once the husband returned home in triumph, he drank with a golden cup given by the king and died of direct poisoning in the evening. Erzibad did not show any sadness. She took care of her husband's funeral calmly and began to take charge of everything. At a nobleman's dinner, an old count asks Erzeba to marry him, but she rejects him outright. Coincidentally, she falls in love with the count's son Istvan at the ball. That was the first time she had ever been attracted to a man. The cool-headed, Erzeba went straight to Istvan to chat her up. Istvan was also attracted by the woman's mature charm. The two soon become close at the ball. After the ball, Erzibet warmly invites Istvan to her house. Istvan couldn't refuse. The two of them had the best night of their lives. The next morning, Erzibet opened her eyes. She rubbed her hands against the man's strong arms. When she loves a man, she wants to take every inch of him. Erzibet was filled with desire. She is in a very low mood when she leaves. Istvan gave her a love letter. Erzibet reads it many times and a sweet smile comes to her face. Women in love are always sentimental, not to mention the fact that Erzibet and Istvan were 20 years apart, and she was in a state of deep anxiety. She was afraid that Istvan would think he was too old. She looked at herself in the mirror all day to try to relieve some of her anxiety. Early that morning, she took a deep breath, leaned down and cut a small strand of Istvan's hair, put it to her nose, and sniffed it greedily. She thought this would keep his heart forever, one day, Istvan rode to her to meet her. Erzibet was excited to change into her best dress, but Istvan didn't show up until the ball was over. Erzibet's smile faded, and she thought Istvan didn't want her anymore. But in the end, he appeared. Only in a very urgent tone, he asks Erzibet to wait for him at home, and never depart with her again when he has finished with some business. Erzibet waited at home from early morning until dusk, but Istvan didn't show up again. She rode urgently to ask why, but got no answer. It turned out that Istvan's affair with her had been discovered by her father. The woman he had not gotten was madly in love with his son. The old count was furious and put him under house arrest. In fact, he was only after Erzibet to get her property. Now, with their love affair, he has hatched a dirty plan. When the maid was combing her mistress' hair, she accidentally pulled out a few strands. In anger, the mistress grabbed the comb and hit the maid's head hard. She wouldn't stop until blood splashed on her face. She tried to wipe the blood off her face with a cloth, but unexpectedly found that the blood-soaked skin seemed to have become more tender and smooth. The woman seemed to be ten years younger instantly. She seemed to understand something. A smile of satisfaction on her face. The same day, she came to console the maid herself. She gently stroked the back of the maid's hand. She pretended to be concerned and asked the mayor age and asked her if she was still a virgin. Erzibet had a greedy look on her face and she told her maid to get some rest. The simple girl also boasted to others that the mistress was not as fierce as she thought. But she didn't know that the blood from her wounds was sent directly to Erzibet every day to become her skincare product. As time passed, the maid's wounds gradually healed. This made Erzibet very unhappy every day. Erzibet asked some maids to come forward and see how her face had changed. The maids were afraid of her and had to say that it looked whiter. Erzibet was satisfied with the answer and she became even more convinced that virgin blood had a cosmetic effect. From then on the poor maid servant had to have her blood taken every day. At first her wrists were cut and gradually her arms. Bowls of fresh blood were brought to Erzibet one after another. She became obsessed with this way of skin care, and her demand for blood grew. The poor maid became weaker and weaker. She begged Erzibet to stop, but Erzibet ignored her. Soon the maid dies, but Erzibet's thirst for youth continues to grow wildly. She received a letter from her lover some time ago. In the letter, the man broke up and said that Erzibet always reminded him of his dead mother. 
Erzibet's love just disappeared. She didn't hate Istan for his heartlessness. She just kept blaming herself for not being younger. Erzibet went crazy. She builds a giant juicer and throws many virgins into it every day to squeeze out fresh blood. And Erzibet Saturday on a bench to receive a full body skincare. Hearing the girls gut trenching more, her expression was indifferent. During this time, only her new lover has been with her. The man willingly put up with Erzibet's complaints and kept complimenting her on her recent beauty. This convinced Erzibet of the beauty benefits of blood. How did the ancient Europeans relieve their beauty anxiety? She simply applied the blood of a virgin to her face and instantly looked 10 years younger. For this reason, the woman built a giant juicer and put many virgins into it every day to squeeze out blood for bathing. The woman does this simply because her lover thinks she is old and it does not want to fall in love with her. Erzibet's demand for blood is growing. All the virgins in a 10 mile radius were spared. The increasing number of missing girls also attracted the attention of the royal family. They launched a secret investigation into Erzibet, and Erzibet could no longer find any virgins. Anxious, she fell ill. The lover was actually an undercover agent arranged by the old count. He was the one who had been hypnotizing Erzibet all these days. This feeds the evil in her mind. When the time was right, he stole the evidence of Erzibet's murder of the girl and returned to the old count to complete his mission. At this time, the old count finally revealed his ambition. Eastman's farewell letter to Erzibet was also forged by the old count. He was just trying to get Erzibet to give up and accept a man's affection again. The old count also kidnapped Erzibet's children and forced them to sign a transfer of property. He also informed the king of Erzibet's crimes. The king sends Istvan to her house to investigate the truth. Over the years, Istvan had heard about Erzibet's murderous behavior. He could not believe that she had become like this and planned to go there himself to find out the truth. Erzibet couldn't contain her excitement and surprise when she saw Istvan upstairs. She puts on her best dress and waits for Istvan to come in. The lovers see each other again, but they don't have the same feelings as before. Both of them are very sad, but the stench of dead bodies and the flies in the room make Istvan believe the rumors. At night, he pretended to sleep with Erzibet, and then he walked slowly down to the basement. He saw a horrifying scene. The next day, Erzibet was officially arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment. The king made a small prison for her leaving only a small gap for food. Erzibet accepted it all with equanimity. In the end, she bit her wrist and bled to death. What is sad in her heart is not the loss of lifelong freedom, but the abandonment and distrust of her lover. Even though it was a conspiracy of the cow, the only light in her life was extinguished. People are always obsessed with what they can have when they are young. Nevertheless, the heinous crime she committed cannot be ignored. She deserved her fate.